This is Mark, back to show you a bit more of how I can do. Uh, previous videos have just have been quite technical, I've just shown you how to connect up various instruments. This one I actually want to focus a little bit more on the functionality that IGND can provide and why we think it's a, a very good um, live performance environment. So something, some way that you can actually control the instrument naturally uh, from the instrument itself. It's kind of an extension of the controller as it were. Um, so what I'm going to show you is on my brand new uh, sound plane uh, from Madrona Labs, beautiful instrument. Um, and I've been developing an agent for it, so it talks to IGND directly uh, via um, OSC, the Touch 3D protocol. Um, it's a brand new agent, so it's, a, it's certainly in development still. Uh, what you can actually see up here is on the screen is actually a representation of the uh, sound plane. Um, and, uh, superimposed onto it, I've actually shown the lights that would usually come up on a, an icon harp, which in a, help you guide yourself around the menu structure. In reality, you don't actually need them once you know your um, setup pretty well, because you know where to press on, on the surface. But when you're not familiar, it's useful, and obviously for demonstration purposes. Um, and I have to say, I'm not particularly familiar with the setup either. Um, I've created pretty much for the demo. So this um, is actually a setup that comes from Eigen Labs. It's actually the same setup used on, on the Eigen Harp Alpha. Um, so it just goes to show that you can actually do everything with an alternative controller. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So first of all, what I'm gonna show you actually is, um, it's obviously a, little, a lot more complex setup we've got here. We've got samplers and uh, audio units and all sorts of stuff, which I can't show you all of today. Um, but uh, what I just wanted to show you, is, as in previous videos, you've got stage that you could use. Um, I'm not gonna concentrate on that, but remember that you can use that on an iPad as well um, to control things. Uh, but I'm gonna concentrate more on the, uh, on the instrument control side. But I just thought I'd show you that it does kind of work. So for example, here, uh, currently we can see that the um, sound player is running on a major scale. But we can switch it in stage, for example, to a chromatic scale. Um, okay. I'll switch it back. Um, you could do that from the sound plane itself as well, uh, but I'll just, just show you that uh, stage is working. Okay, so the next thing you might want to do um, is obviously select instruments. Um, so we can do that, but basically we've got menu keys on here, um, and the first menu key is here, and you can see the blue dot at the top, that's representing which instrument you've got, and I can actually select another instrument by coming, for example, I'll select that one. So I've got a different instrument now. Uh, this is an interesting instrument because this is actually a cross-faded sample. Um, that's one of the good things about Eigen D is that, remember, it's all perky expression. It's kind of cross-fade. And I've obviously got complete pitch control as well that's independent. So that's one feature that you'd expect for uh, controlling on the, on the fly. Next thing we obviously also would like usually is, sorry, is uh, splits. So we can do that also from the Eigen Harp as well. Uh, from, sorry, from Eigen D. Now I've got two different things. I've got... So for example, um, after that we can then... Uh, what else would we like to do? Um, oh, it's, it's changing the instrument just for that split, but we'll change back to the main uh, instrument. Back in. So uh, that's changing instruments. Uh, the next thing we might want is to have some accompaniment. So we can do that. We can turn on uh, a drum loop. Uh, if I press the right key, which I've got to remember it is, it's here. That's it. Um, that's all very good, but we can actually then extend that, obviously, which gets make it a little bit more interesting. And we can select that from the so-called drummer menu, which is around here. Yeah. Uh, we could now add some things to it. So. Second. OK, 
Okay, now uh, what else can we do? Well, uh, we've also got um, something called the arranger, which is actually a very, very fancy, um, well, step sequencer is, is not what it is, but it's the easiest thing to describe it. Um, if we come into here, uh, nope, I've done that wrong. Um, I don't want that at all. I want to go back to the instrument, sorry. And, um, sorry, if I select the step sequencer, um, we can have this as well. So now we can actually enter notes. Example really, um, and then so let's go back to our thing. Let's get a different instrument, I think, because I'm a bit bored of that one now. Um, let's select um, uh, something from one of my audio units, is from Camel. So now, now what I can show you is um, perhaps recording. Okay, let's do a little bit of recording. So now we have to trigger the recording. <laughs> just something we, uh, to play with. Oh, and another thing we can actually do, we've also got, um, the keyboards are actually split. This is, over here I've got drums as well. Uh, I could, could be playing, obviously, record live as well. Um, that's really actually, I think, all I wanted to show. Um, so, yeah, you've got you've got quite a lot of things that you usually use in a kind of a live environment. Obviously, the recording, you can do build many, many layers with lots of different instruments. You've got the range that can do all sorts of things. You can split controls, change the layouts. Um, oh, uh, up here is actually changing octave. So that, that, that kind of the kind of thing that you'd really expect from uh, when you actually want to play the instrument live. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I can do. Can do. Um, and as you can see, not on an organ harp. On in this case, if we join us, that Labs sampling. Thanks very much. Cheers.